You're sitting at your desk. You know it's time to go. You said that to yourself over a million times. But this time, you know for sure it's real. You're tired. You're just so very tired. Your parents pissed you off like school wasn't bad enough today. You go to get the rope or the knife or the gun or whatever you choose to use because you're that desperate to leave. You're ready. You think of it as some game. The first one dead is the first one who wins. No one's home. It's the perfect time. You're ready. If you don't do it now, you're just going to look down on yourself even more forever. You're going to hate yourself even more. No one will know. No one will ever know. Until later on. Instead of getting a paper and a pen, you get the video camera and a wooden chair. Just standing on the chair, you decide to go with the rope. You'll be gone instantly. There'll be no noise. One side of the rope is tied to the fan, while the other is around your neck. You're in tears, and you know it's for real this time. You can feel it. You turn on the video camera, and you just stare at the red blinking light upon your eyes. You start to mumble out a few words. Mum, Dad, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. I just can't do this anymore. I even know who I am anymore. I've lost myself, and I seem there's no way back. Please don't blame yourself. Please, I love you both. Please tell my siblings the same. Stay strong and stay safe. I'll see you all soon. You say sorry to your best friend because you know you won't be there anymore when he needs you most. You say sorry to everyone you can think of, even yourself. You're sorry for not being stronger anymore. You're sorry for breaking down. You're sorry for putting them through so much pain in their life. You stare once again at the red light blinking upon your eyes. One foot is off the chair now. As you began to mouth the words, goodbye, you have the remote control to turn off the camera in your right hand. You'll point a finger on the off button. You're all ready. You click that button, and as soon as you see that light go off, you go off. Both feet are now off the chair. That chair is on the floor. The room is filled with silence. You're dead. You're gone. And there's no going back. What are your parents going to think? What about your little brother or your little sister? What are they going to do? You're gone. You're dead. There's no going back. You ended your life because that person who liked who you liked, only thought of you as a friend. You ended your life because that one teacher was harder on you than anyone else in the class because she knew that you were the only one that is going somewhere in life. Your parents are home now. They call your name, telling you that they're home, just like they normally do whenever they get home. But something's different. You don't answer. They don't hear your voice, they get worried. You always answer. They come upstairs thinking you're sleeping or showering. Your mum opens your door and she screams at the top of her lungs. She instantly passes out. Your little sister hears her and comes up after. She screams, Daddy, help! She runs over to you, hitting your leg, begging you to wake up. Wake up, please stop. But you don't answer. You're not waking up. You're gone. You're dead. There's no waking up. There's no going back. Your dad comes running upstairs and all he can do is stare. He watches his baby girl staring back at him, swinging back and forth on the rope. He sees the video camera and he sees the chair, but he doesn't move. He's 
stiff as a board. He cries. Your dad never cries. He picks up the phone and calls 999. He can barely get the words out of his mouth. My daughter committed suicide. Your little sister stares at your dad. He hangs up and she jumps right into your daddy's arms. And she cries more than ever. She's too young to understand completely. But she knows you're gone. She knows you're dead. She knows that you're never ever coming back. Everything is over. The cops finally arrive. They take your dad and sister out of the room. And now they're sitting in the living room. They take your body down off the rope and lay you on a stretcher. They cover your body and out you go, just like that. In the blink of an eye, everything happened and everything was over. You're gone, you're dead, and there's no going back. Nothing is the same. Two months have passed, and your mum still stares out of the window half the day, sometimes even the full day. Your little sister still hasn't returned to school. And your dad was forced to go back to work. So he could pay all the bills to your wake and to your funeral. Eventually, they found the strength to go back into your room. Your door hasn't been open for two months. The rope is still lying on the floor, the same place the cops put it. And the video camera, still on the table. They don't even dare to watch that video. It will never be seen. They slowly pick up the rope and throw it in the garbage. Chills run up their spine. Your mum, basically in tears. They brush off your bed, making it neat, like they used to do every morning after you went to school. Your desk was empty. It didn't have those little sticky notes you used to leave before you ran to the bus saying, have a good day, mum, or Remember to smile, or have fun at work, Dad, smiley face. You pretended to be so happy. You even tricked yourself. Your bed was made, and your room was clean. They shut the door, and it remained shut. Your school is still under stress. You thought no one cared, and you thought no one noticed you. Remember that girl? Yeah. The one that said no to being your partner? Yes. She cuts every single night now. Because she thinks it's her fault you died. Do you remember that boy? The one that tripped you by accident and just looked at you and didn't even say sorry? Yes. He's in suicidal therapy five days a week in the hospital because he thinks a smile could have saved your life. And could have saved you. He didn't give that to you. Do you remember that teacher? The one who was hard on you that day? She quit her job because she feels she wasn't suited to teaching anymore. You're gone. You're dead. There's no going back. Ten years have passed now. Your little sister is now 15 years old. She started a club. It's in her school dedicated to you. Secret is what she called it. The club is formed for kids to speak their heart without anyone judging them. They can say anything they want to. They can talk about anything they needed to. If they were suicidal, there was all, they always had someone they could talk to. That was your problem. You didn't want to talk to anyone. You had everything bottled up inside of you. You acted as if you were the happiest kid on the planet. And you acted as if you had the perfect life. You played that happy character so well. That even you started to believe it. You would be so happy all day. And as soon as you got into bed that night, the thoughts come back. A little fight between your parents could set you off. But with everything inside of you bottled up for years, you just hit your limit. You're gone. You're dead.
and there's no going back. Your room will never be occupied. Your mum still cries every single night. Your dad isn't, isn't as strong as he used to be. Your little sister will never grow up with you by her side, moving her in the right direction. She needed you. Your best friend needed you. He is still torn apart. He needed you. Your parents don't know what to do anymore. They needed you. Your school now has a club dedicated to you. So teens will not make the same mistake you did. Your life was precious. And you took it away in the blink of an eye. All you needed was a smile. That's all you needed. To tell you that everything will be okay. But since you're gone, just know people cared. People always have cared. And people always will care. You were just way too upset to see that. You were just too caught up in the fact that you thought no one cared. When the truth was, more people cared about you than you ever felt they would. And you know what sucks? It sucks that you see that now that you're dead. And you didn't see that when you were still here. Your town will never be the same. A girl is gone. A special girl. A girl who thought no one cared. Everyone cared. I promise you, they care. They always have cared and they always will care. We loved you. And no matter what, we will still always love you.